Describing sets. A set is simply a collection of objects. These objects can be numbers, letters, colors, animals, funny quotes, or just about anything else you can imagine. We will usually refer to the objects in a set as the members or elements of the set. Let's look at some examples of sets. The set consisting of apple and banana. This set has two elements, apple and banana. How about the set consisting of anteater, elephant, egg, and trapezoid? This set has four elements, anteater, elephant, egg, and trapezoid. The set consisting of two, four, six, eight, and 10 has five elements. The elements of this set happen to be numbers the numbers 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. A set is determined by its elements and not the order in which the elements are presented. For example, the set 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 can also be written as the set 4, 2, 8, 6, 10. These are the same set. Another way to write this set is 2, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 10, 10. We usually will only write each element of a set once. So all three of these sets are the same. And the first way that we wrote it, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, is the most natural way to describe the set. We will usually name sets using capital letters such as A, B, and C. For example, we'll use the capital letter A to represent the set consisting of the numbers 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so A is the set consisting of the elements 1, 2, and 3. Consider the sets A equals set consisting of A and B, B equals the set consisting of B and A, and C equals the set consisting of A, B, and A. Can you describe any relationships between the sets A, B, and C? If you were paying attention, you'll notice that A, B, and C all represent the same set. A, B, and C are all equal to each other. Remember, sets are determined by their elements, not the order in which they're presented, and not the number of times each element is repeated inside the set. We use the symbol epsilon to represent membership. X epsilon A means X is an element of A. X not epsilon A means X is not an element of A. Let's look at an example. A equals the set consisting of A, K, three, dotted box, and crossed circle. Little a is an element of A, K is an element of A, three is an element of A, dotted box is an element of A, and crossed circle is an element of A. If a set consists of many elements, we can use ellipses to help describe the set. Example, the set consisting of the natural numbers between 17 and 5,326 inclusive can be written as follows. The set consisting of 17, 18, 19, followed by some ellipses, 5,325, 5,326. The ellipses indicate that there are elements in the set that we are not explicitly mentioning. The word inclusive means that we include 17 and 5,326. If we didn't want to include those numbers, we would use the word exclusive. Ellipses can also be used to help describe infinite sets. Let's look at some examples of infinite sets. N 
equals the set consisting of 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. This is the set of natural numbers. Notice how we use the special font when writing the n to describe this very specific set of natural numbers. z equals dot dot dot, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. This is the set of integers. O equals 1, 3, 5, 7, and so on. This is the set of odd natural numbers. 2z equals dot dot dot, negative 6, negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, 4, 6, and so on, is the set of even integers. p equals 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, and so on, is the set of prime numbers. A set can also be described by a certain property, p, that all its elements have in common. In this case, we can use what's called the set builder notation, the set of x such that p of x, to describe the set. Okay, we can read this expression as the set of all x such that the property p of x is true, or more simply, the set of x such that p of x. Example, the set 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 can also be described in some additional ways. Let's look at some of those ways. The set of n such that n is an even positive integer less than or equal to 10. How about this way? This first expression can be read n is in the set of integers, or more simply, n is an integer. So we can read this whole set as the set of integers n such that n is even and n is between 0 and 10, including 10, but excluding 0. Here's one more way to write this set. The set of 2k such that k is 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. If a is a finite set, we define the cardinality of A written in a way such that we put the A inside of two lines, similar to absolute value, to be the number of elements of A. So the cardinality of A is just the number of elements of A when A is a finite set. Let's look at an example. How about this set, the set consisting of A and B? The cardinality of this set is 2. Let's look at some more examples. A is the set consisting of anteater, egg, and trapezoid. This set has cardinality 3. B is the set consisting of 2, 3, and 3. Do you remember what the cardinality of this set would be? It's 2. Don't forget that the set consisting of 2, 3, and 3 is the same as the set consisting of just the numbers 2 and 3. How about this one? C equals the set consisting of 17, 18, 19, dot, 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 5,325, 5,326. The cardinality of this set is 5,310. Let's see why this would be. I used what I call the fence post formula here. The fence post formula says the number of consecutive integers from m to n inclusive is n minus m plus 1. Here, m is 17, n is 5,326. So when we plug these numbers into the formula, we get 5,326 minus 17 plus 1 which comes out to 5,310. The empty set is the unique set with no elements. We will usually use the following symbol to denote the empty set. It's like a little circle with a diagonal line through it. Some authors use a different symbol, just basically a set of brackets with nothing inside. 